Welcome everyone, Christine here with a discussion about World of Warcraft Burning Crusade Classic for which we have a release date for the Overlords of Outland patch 2.5.2 patch notes, though they don't include all of the information that we would like to have. Some of it can be found elsewhere, some of it is just something they haven't talked about uh, in general, like questions of engineering or questions of the Swift flight form uh, for Druids. There's not really anything about that. Instead, what we get is this. So we get SSC with Lady Vash, six bosses in Qualifying Reservoir, then the I with four bosses in Tempest Keep, Arena Season 2, Ogre Law, and Shatari Skyguard daily content, which beyond the daily quest that it will open, uh, it will open up uh, more loot opportunities for people beyond just giving people daily quests to do for the sake of gold. So uh, that's welcome. But there's also some loot, some BOE items that can be very good. A trinket for feral druids in particular, that's going to be very welcome. On top of that, guild banks, which honestly should have been in from the very start. And a lot of guilds will appreciate having these in a group browser tool that, again, should have been in from the start. Uh, then PvP rewards changes, outlines factions PvP gear now unlocks with phase 2 and requires a revered reputation to purchase. These are items uh, sold in Fralmar, Honor Hold, Scenario Expedition, Shatar, Lore City and Keepers of Time. So I guess it's a reason for people that are starting fresh characters to grind those reputations even more so than before. I mean there was always a reason to get your reputation to revered, if not exalted, with certain factions, but now there's even more reason if you're a PvPer. Beyond that, when Season 1 ends, there will be a one-week off-season. Honor will not reset at the beginning of Season 2. When Season 2 begins, any remaining unspent arena points will be converted to honor points, which is what is expected. On top of that, uh, raid rewards, tier tokens, uh, Molgar, Gruul, Mag, will drop two tier four, uh, four tokens each, which is very welcome because it can be annoying to have to do those bosses over and over again. At least make Mac Ferriton, which has tier pieces that some pieces uh, some people want, other people don't necessarily care about. And in a similar vein, Leo, FLK, Lady Vash, Void Reaver, and Kalefas will also drop two tier five tokens each, which again is welcome. Not everyone cares about tier 4 or tier 5. Some people want tier 4, some people want tier 5, some people don't care about uh, either of them. Uh, so it's nice to, ha uh, to have two tier tokens. Like for instance, mages and hunters want uh, tier tokens. Paladins, shamans and rogues, yeah, to a certain extent, absolutely. But consider how many warlocks and hunters you have, uh, warlocks, hunters, and the mage you have in a raid versus how many paladins you have in a raid. And again, shamans don't really care too much necessarily about uh, tier 5 because of the benefits of tier 4. That's just an example, but a lot of shamans want uh, tier 4. So uh, adding these extra, tr extra token drops is a welcome addition. Should have honestly had it from the very beginning. And then a whole bunch of bug fixes and improvements. Cypher of Damnation, kind of important um, w to have this quest working properly because it's part of the Tempest Keep attunement uh, chain. An interesting fix uh, that's over here is that they fixed an issue with... A priest being able to abuse a macro to not take any damage from Shadow War Death. So players may no longer negate the da backlash damage from Shadow War Death. Not too important, at least not for PvE. For PvP, yeah, can have some impact, but again, not really the biggest change in the world. But that's not all. These, uh, this log, this patch log, or these patch notes rather, they don't include all the changes that Blizzard is going to implement. Far from it. Uh, first off, let's go over when all of this is going to come out. So on September 7th in Europe, arena uh, we'll end Arena Season 1 with a regional reset. This will begin a one week. Uh, actually, this is in the US, sorry. So I'm a bit wrong on this. By the way, they'll end... Arena season one on September seventh in the in the U.S. and begin a one week off season. And adjustments to season one arena and honor gear costs will go into effect. So, um, 
honor gear it will get more honor gear as well that's one of the things we expect though i don't think they've talked about that in any post and on top of that they'll also adjust the cost of various pieces of gear that already are in the game so uh, for instance if you want a season one weapon like a prop paladin you may want a season one weapon uh, it's no longer going to cost, uh, it's no longer going to require rating. You will have to grind it in Season 2 once that starts, but it will no longer require rating. And then Arena Season 2 will begin with a regional reset on September 40th in this region. At the same week, Phase 2 content will unlock at the same moment in all regions worldwide. Wednesday, September 15th at 3 p.m. PDT, 6 p.m. EDT. This is the time that the Shatari Skyguard and Ogre Lock content will become available. And Serpent Shrine Cavern and TK will be open for business. Now, this is important because it gives you some time. It gives you over a day, or it gives you some time at the very least, uh, to be able to go to the Honor Vendor, assuming you have it, to buy the new Honor pieces, assuming they'll be available. Don't know for certain, and actually there's a number of things that they haven't talked about, or at least I haven't seen, any, anything mentioned, but are on the PTR. Um, and this is about the LFG uh, tool that they're adding. So some of the things they haven't talked about, some of the things they're not mentioning in these patch notes is in relation to whether or not we're going to get the Epic Flight Form for Druids. It's on the PTR. Will we get it in the full release or not? On top of that, question, will we get the engineering helms or will engineers get the new helmets? which are best in slot until tier six, even over tier six in some cases for a number of classes. So that's kind of important to know. Rogues and protection warriors, uh, maybe even uh, DPS warriors, especially will be interested in knowing whether or not they're gonna get their uh, their helmets. Uh, so those kind of things are, are important to know and Blizzard is, hasn't really talked uh, anything as far as I know about those kind of things and then there's the new LFG tool so in Overlords and Outland the classic LFG interface received some behind the scenes improvements while we've kept look and feel you're familiar with these improvements should make it even better than you remember with more activities available group listings and more get back on track and find adventuring companions just like in the original release of TBC the LFG interface can only be accessed through a new icon in your uh, uh, can be accessed for a new icon on your action bar next to the social button. This will open a window that prompts you to indicate whether you want to start a group or join one that's already in progress of being assembled. Okay, and looking for adventure, recruiting for danger, and adventure time. So it seems to me, based on what they're saying here with the LFG tool, that we're not going to quite get the modern Shadowlands LFG tool that maybe some of us would have expected given their initial statement, but rather we're gonna get one that is more similar to what we had back in the day with just some new additions. The question I have here is what's the damn point? Uh, especially at this stage when there's fewer people in TBC doing activities outside of say ray logging. Uh, like there's fewer people doing dungeons at this moment, very few people actually doing dungeons, it's become quite a problem. Uh, so what's the point? And on top of that, we have the LFG bulletin board, which is a pretty solid add-on. Is this going to be better than the LFG, uh, than the bulletin board, or is it just going to be an addition to that? You're going to use, you're going to want to use both for the benefits uh, that you get, uh, dependent on what you're, you're interested in. I mean, there's limitations with the bulletin board. It's ultimately based on the LFG channel, and there's some limitations with what it can do. So. Uh, is it going to be worth it to have it? But overall, we got some of the things we, you know, many of the things we expected, some of the things they haven't talked about. The one thing, going back to the first page, um, I, I'm still I'm still wondering about something that's actually kind of important. What versions of bosses are we going to get? Are we going to get nerfed bosses uh, in Tier 4? Are they going to introduce the nerfs in Tier 4? which is something that they said they they would do eventually at the round table, that they're going to have more difficult versions early on, and then they're going to nerf the bosses. Are they going to do that, or are they going to keep the bosses as they are? And then with the Tier 5 bosses, are they going to keep them as they have been on the PTR as of late, or are they going to implement some changes? Because they did that, by the way, 
between the beta and the full release? So those are some of the questions. I guess there is an element of mystery that I'd say is important to the World of Warcraft experience to have when you're going up against the boss and you're not quite certain what you're going to get. And I think in this day and age, especially with World of Warcraft, um, especially with retail, it's we, we've kind of gotten to a point where we know what all the bosses are going to do. There's very little mystery in that. So having some of that mystery may be important, but there's still the questions like what are what is Blizzard doing? Their lack of communication on this front, I feel it is an issue to a certain certain extent. It's like what's a bu- especially when we're thinking about what's a bug and what's intended is say Shade of Iran meleeing players when he should be casting on them is that an intended behavior or is that a bug that they're gonna uh, is that an intended behavior that they want to keep or is that the bugs that they're eventually going to fix or is that the pre-nerf mechanic that they're going to change those kind of things are questions that i would like and that i'm sure a lot of people would like answers for but we just have a lack of communication from blizzard but anyway that's all there is to say here we have patch notes as poor as they can be in certain respects. We do have patch notes. We do have some information. We do have uh, release date information. Uh, Not quite everything we want to know or players want to know, but it is something. Cosina, you're signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications.